Oh, I, I forgot to mention when I did my middle school stories that uh, they know I YouTube now. Oh no. They they. <laughs> so so I they I published the book obviously, and you know because I'm me, I like to promote all of my content. My website is listed in the the author bio. You know if they want to read more works, go to here. Uh, the kids took that literally. Uh, they went to the website and through it they found YouTube. <sighs> So, wow. well, they know what I do now. Great. Good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I am not censoring anything on my nope. channel. No. Nope. So, nope. uh, yeah. <laughs> Just all the more reason. All Hi, the more, kids. All the more Fuck reason you for, for being here. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, do your so, homework. So, well, so here's the, here's the thing. They know about me. I don't know if they know about you two yet. So, oh, okay. I see how it yeah, well, so, well, 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 yeah. the eventuality will occur. Eventuality, yeah. Eventually, they're going to, you know, because yeah. you, know, you guys have appeared on my channel, so eventually they're going to put two and two together and go look at mm -hmm. their stuff. Because they're, they're, my eighth graders are smart. They're not, they're not stupid kids. Like, they will absolutely. Yeah. They could no, abs call one out. Call one they, out right now. <laughs> they, could, they could absolutely join the CIA if they wanted to. <laughs> I believe the term is precocious. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the finale for Ruby Ice Queendom. Yay. In our last episode, we literally learned that none of this show makes any goddamn sense. Oh, no, like, God. We, we had the inklings of suspicion before, <laughs> or should we say that we, we, we kind of suspected that it was going to be the case, but we had hope. And then episode 11 happened. And all that hope went down the drain. Yeah. Yeah. Episode 10 and 11 were like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> oh yeah, it's Ruby. Yeah. What were the, the two good ones? Being... The two good ones were six and seven, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Where we first got Tiny Weiss and then the Attack on Titan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that was an episode. <laughs> fuck. And it basically ended. We're basically here at the best day ever. The first episode of Volume Two, presumably. Presumably. Now, I don't know how it's going to play out. I've already seen the end card for this because the sketchy huntsmen don't realize that I react to this. They don't? Uh, so <laughs> they don't? No, they do. It's just they coffee decided to ignore it and post the, the, the Got end card. Got it. Okay. Uh, Which fairness, so did the official Ruby account. So that's not necessarily just on her. That was them yeah, spoiling. And the themselves. end card also isn't really a spoiler. No. In unless it's like an actual like bona fide post credit scene, but like if it's just those, like, images that are super highly rendered, that's fine. Uh, the, this end card is actually done by Ayn Lee, so it's ah, uh, okay. kind of a full circle type deal going on. She's, Ayn Lee she's does a, good She art. does, like, concept art for, like, actual Ruby, right? Yes. Yes. She's been yeah, with she the was, show. like, the original designer. Yeah, she's been with the show since its inception. Oh. All right. Well, let's get into the best day ever. All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ice Queen is ending. It's going to be good no matter what. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Okay, place your bets. Are they gonna have, like, blown all of the animation budget that they should have spent on 10 and 11 on this one? D blow it on the food fight? Yeah. Yeah, like, is the food fight gonna be, like, all over-animated as shit? Or, like... I, I, uh, I, I, people predicted, predicted that they'll just cut away from the food fight like they did the fight at the end of Volume 1. Maybe. Okay. Dear sister, you would not believe the shit I've been smoking since I came here. <laughs> oh, Blake over here just getting horny. <sighs> no, I don't want to do that position, Yang. <laughs> Stop showing me the Kama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it's, it's establishing Ruby likes to write letters to her dad. So she writes letters, that's a thing. Always support my team as the ideal teammate. Are you though? Wow. Man, their Tekken 8 looks way better than ours. Uh, well, she didn't do that much. She only saved me from literally a dark incarnation of myself. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing impressive. She made me not racist anymore. Wait, do you have personalized, um, what do they call it? Like, personalized, uh, uh, uh paper? It has, like, rose petals on it. <laughs> so they got, they got stationary? Beacon just Yeah, I was gonna say, personalized yeah. stationary. <laughs> uh. 
She just wait, got done wait. risking her life to save you. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, dude, are we? Uh, I'm sorry. Are we just pretending that the last seven episodes never happened? Yes, we are. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is canon in Ruby. <laughs> Even Gen Rabuchi knows it. <laughs> <laughs> How is Ruby's cape attached on that outfit? I don't know. Willpower? Yeah, look at that. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? are we skipping ahead? Are we skipping back? What's happening? Wait, wait, was... That was a... Wow. <laughs> Alright, I'll give him this. At least we're seeing them, like, do, like, everyday stuff and get a little personality from them. <laughs> that being awesome. said, like, what the hell was that transition? Like, <laughs> we went from flashback to present to flashback to present? Without really... Aww. Showing? Yeah, I'm confused by that, too. Good God. Also, I was gonna say, interesting note, I have forgotten to put up the copyright shield on like the last three or four episodes that I've uploaded, oh. and I haven't gotten tagged once. Really? It is weird. Okay. Yeah. All My right, time's working. I, time for me I, to got, I got tagged for the episode seven reaction. Like multiple times. This is how to read people's minds. Now it's time for me to disappear and never be mentioned. <laughs> How, how do you know it was the ability that reads people's hearts? Oh. Yeah, that, that was a big point. By the way, before Shion came along, people were just fucked with Nightmare Grim. I'm sorry, okay, I'm, sorry do you wanna, you, I'm sorry, do you want to rephrase that? <laughs> the, okay, no, they, they were, the tentacles were very intrusive. <laughs> They inserted them in places you never expect. Well, only really one of you. You'll be able to phase through physical matter. <laughs> Pure won't know oh, that, but oh, she's dead. Whoa, whoa. What the whoa. fuck? <laughs> this is... Ooh. I mean, it's cool, but I'm disoriented. I'm getting a little vertigo here. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Pira there? Like, like she's important. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> we are at least getting characters interacting. I mean, I know it's still, <laughs> but it's, it is yeah, better it, than the actual show. It really is. <laughs> the path will lead you to fortune and happy. Nora we'll you to... poking Weiss is more interaction than they've had, I think, almost ever. Well, there was that time she shot her through, like, the garbage chute. Yeah. That was literally volume eight. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. That was yeah. eight volumes from this time period. That yeah. is I know. disappointing. Uh. Are you going to ask about the Silver Eyes? <laughs> no, of course not. Uh. Yeah, I can just say I have a plan, and then my team just does whatever they want, and it works out. <laughs> <laughs> She's she's literally just a fucking bard. Bardic <laughs> inspiration, that's all that is. <laughs> uh. I, I, she doesn't remember. I fucking damn it. <laughs> Ruby, you were strung up like a fucking rag doll, and then everything uh. burned white. Uh. The power of friendship. I God, fucking knew it. Fucking I damn fucking it. Fucking knew it. God, I'm so angry right now. Fucking damn it. <laughs> Also, I completely forgot to ask about the laser beams that came out of my eyes. You know, I, I completely yeah. forgot about that. Oh. oh, are we going to transition into the interrogation scene? We At must this be. point? B 
Be sure to make it back in time for the team orgy. It is? Oh, god damn it, it is. Ugh. The lighting isn't as good. <sighs> no, yeah, nor is it in the room that it was supposed to be in. When did we first see Ospin's office? Volume was it two? Volume one or volume two? I don't remember if we saw it in volume one. I don't remember if we saw it in volume one. Because if it was in volume two, it's possible they didn't have the set finished by then. So yeah. it was supposed to happen here, but it didn't. Yeah, because it was kind of a big shot when they like zoomed in from like the fleet all the way to his office in the in the tower. Like that was kind of a big shot. That might have been the first time we saw it. Maybe. I mean, we kind of skipped over it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just kind of wind up there. Weiss is a total power bottom. <laughs> My parents are the president of Australia. <laughs> Power bottom time, power bottom time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that scene was good, but it was already good. So, I mean... <sighs> I, give, I think Shaft gave it a lot more gravitas. But it kind of rings a little more hollow after the, you know, the fucking... Oh. She yeah. gets consumed by the nightmare and turns yeah. into... Yeah, to, to, that would have been... <laughs> like, <laughs> she already confronted that, and now she's just doing it with Ozpin in the room. Yeah, like, it... That scene kind of, Actually, yeah, that scene really kind of loses its... Yeah. But, uh, I get they want to tie this into Volume 2 now, but... They... All right, Shouldn't. so the ideal version of Ruby Volume 1 and 2 is some chopped up amalgamation of scenes from this and the original. No. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, we'll all forget about it. Yeah, yeah. don't worry, it's Weiss. Not very mem it's not Volume a very memorable Volume 2 show. isn't canon. Ha! What? <laughs> oh my god, Ruby and Bla Ruby and Yang? Being sisters? They had a, a scene together? <laughs> this is this is like groundbreaking. Uh, Ruby should be more of this. Yeah, I completely agree. I yeah. actually enjoying this yeah. so much. I don't I don't need the big flashy fights. I just need the characters being fun. Or like, you know, this stuff would at least add a little gravity to the big flashy fights. Oh my fights. god, Sun is interacting with them. <laughs> oh, wow. Once again, uh, I you completely... need character dynamics. Oh my god. <laughs> and once again, I completely forgot Sun was in this. Uh, I mean, he's shown up like Three times? Where's his tail? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, this isn't Sun, it's Neo! Run! Run! <laughs> run. <laughs> there it is. Oh. oh, it's back. Why are you sitting at a completely different table? Why are you saying I put a different table? She wants separate checks. Aww! <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess they're two-person tables, but I thought they were four-person tables. Oh, no, they're round. Were they round or square? Oh, th wait, this is... Uh, this is that why Sun was like, Oh, but keep it a secret to Neptune. The, this scene. Proceeds to tell Neptune literally five minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, hmm. Ruby, that's um. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> don't worry, Weiss, you can join Team Juniper. I hear a slot's gonna be opening up pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> That, that would be Weiss's like early monkey paw wish. I wish I was on uh, Pira's team. <laughs> monkey uh, wish granted. Pira's not on it anymore. <laughs> uh. Oh, think of the kitty cats. <laughs> Is that racist? <laughs> All right, I do want to give a Pira cheering someone on. That's that's great. Yeah, I want that as a little gift. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> you, you mean emotionally or? <laughs> yeah. Stop pretending like your characters in this show right now. You're not. <laughs> you haven't been here. Have your screen time was spent meowing. And here we go. Oh, here we go. It, those transitions, man, they are fucking with me. They've been fucking with me this entire uh, series. Like, I, I really appreciate clever transitions, but still, holy shit, that's weird. What was she supposed to do? Let it hit her in the face? <laughs> that delivery is not as good. It really isn't. Oh boy, they really butchered that one. What? What? No, no. What? What? You're making a school tradition to have a food fight? Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop! No! 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 No, that's not how this... You ruined it! <laughs> They're turning into an organized thing! The entire... The entire hilarity of it was the organ, the, the, the complete chaos. This music is also wrong. It's good. Yeah. yeah it's wrong. No, it needs the best day ever music. Like this is no. The song doesn't fit the mood. <laughs> like this is. Wow. They did what I hoped they wouldn't do. They ruined the fucking food fight. <laughs> I mean, I never really liked the food fight, so... <laughs> I, I, so I got to see the food fight uh, when it premiered at RTX that year. Mm. And when you're watching that shit in a room with like a few hundred people... Man, it, t it turns into a really fun event. Like, I think it's fun and goofy, but... Yeah. I, I agree that tonally it's kind of strange. Oh yeah, do you, do you need it? No. Do I appreciate it? Yes. 
生を勝ち得たしかし明るい光もいつかは陰りを見せる闇が生まれ伝説は Oh wait did we never get to this part of the 光の世界の森人たち心しなさい力のみを信じる Did we never get to this part of Salem's speech before? It's I think it's slightly different. No, I, I just I don't remember. What? Like, did we? No, you skipped it. Did you skip uh... it? <laughs> did wow. they skip the white rose moment? Fuck the white rose shippers, man. <laughs> and they got, it, they they got, got an entire destroyed. fucking show to themselves. I don't think we. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, they no, got the, the entire, entire fucking show. <laughs> To no, that's, the point. that's the thing. Like the entire heart of this this season has really been the relationship between the girls, and most prominently was Weiss and Ruby. So like having that be a capstone of the goofy nature of their friendship afterwards. <laughs> wow! I, how did they do that? Uh, how did they ruin the food fight? Uh, it was it was it was right there for them. It was right there. Everything was fine in the food fight. <sighs> <laughs> How did Ruby know all those speeches from like American presidents past? Okay, did, that's that's did, that's an anachronism in the actual. Show. I, I'm I'm, they, I'm just that's something I've always wondered. I just imagine they had their own Nixon. They had their own Nixon. We got we got we got remnant Nixon. <laughs> uh, Who would the remnant? Little do we know, Nixon, Nixon is a color for asshole. Um. <laughs> Oh, support. Uh, okay, well that's that's Ice Queendom. Well, yeah. let's see if there's. Oh, I don't know if there's anything afterwards, but I, uh, I'm I'm gonna keep watching to the end anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm just same. Not skip ahead. Yeah, this doesn't strike me as a as a as a cliffhanger for the next season. If there is gonna be a next season, are we gonna I don't... see <sighs> more Torchwick in the final shot of the show? <laughs> oh, maybe Cinder. A little bit. Maybe. They showed her at the beginning. Yeah, for like a, a glimpse. We don't get 2D Emerald and Mercury? What even is this? I'm loving that. Oh, don't fucking hit me with that. Oh, come oh, on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yo. How did you fuck that up? You didn't Wait, even what? linger on it. Wait, what? Did they... They didn't put the... Uh, Wait, God, I, I would almost, I would almost be like, was that even, uh, did did that even have his <coughs> name on that card? It's yeah, and then I on, and looked down to the corner and saw Monty, and I was just like in memoriam, like, but Monty's been dead for almost a decade. Why are we? Well, I, now that's that. I okay. So if I understand the production history of this, this has been in production since like, at least early talks with production pre-production since like 2017. Oh, something Jesus, like that. really? Yeah. Oh, they, been, it took them five finally... years to make that? <laughs> well, pre-production. They didn't early pre even show his signature. Like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> and uh, this is all this is all like second, third-hand knowledge. I don't know. Um, I, I just remember hearing it. It's like 2017 was when they started like really talking about it and started getting pre-production on the road. It took a while because of other things getting in the way. And obviously Monty's death, I think, impacted it. Um, well, if it was 2017. Then, if it was 2017, Monty was, Monty's been dead for two years at that point. Was it? Oh shit! Fuck! I'm. It's been a while. I know that. Yeah, it, yeah. Monty, Monty died 20, 2015, beginning of twenty fifteen. Uh, so, and then twenty twenty is when like they actually started animating, and the, the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. Yeah, <laughs> even with the Backstreet Boys reunion tour, <laughs> even with that. I I am very disappointed in this final product. It is, this is so yeah. weird that the actual like anime plot, the part that they like wanted to make, was the part that got like shortchanged the most in terms of animation. What, what, what calls me is that like in terms of storyline, it got shortchanged the most. Like that was a story that you could have told in probably like six episodes maximum. Yeah. They really padded that out. Oh yeah, they did. Like how how many times? Did, oh, we reached the grim, got sent away. We reached the grim, got sent away. We reached the grim, finally killed it. It's because they wanted to do things with like all four relics, but it's like 
the 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 relics were so weird because they were colored to match the the characters. You, the characters, but like Ruby lost all of them, so it was like weird. Except the you know like the Weiss one, oh that was that was just bizarre, and I don't appreciate it. What what, what did the relics ultimately end up doing? I don't, I don't know. Remember. I don't. I have no fucking clue what they, they were they supposed to be. They kept making a big. They kept making a big deal about that, but I couldn't. I, I couldn't tell you what. Why? Like Ruby just walked into the final battle. Like she just walked in. Did she even yeah. have the 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 Blake relic on it, her? It was at in that her. Point? It, was, it was in her pouch. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So she did point. have it, but like, what? Uh, what's the point? I don't. Like, did you need I, to open the door to get in? Was that it? Did we miss that somehow? <laughs> I mean, oh, so they're glorified keys, just like the fucking maidens now. Like, yeah. oh boy, <laughs> everything in Ruby is a key. It's because everything in Ruby is based on video game logic. To get to the next level, you must collect MacGuffin A. You need the blue key. Yeah, yeah. the Doom blue. level. Actually, no. If yeah. it were a Doom level, it'd be interesting. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, it, it's just it's so much that it's just like, you know, you had the relics and the relics didn't do anything. You had the whole thing with Ruby Scythe being backwards, but the way they handled it, they completely invalidated literally every bit of setup they did for that. They, you had yeah. the, the fucking, you, you, uh, the big Nicholas statue, which didn't do anything. He had, you, uh, you, you have the, the conversation with, with <laughs> Nicholas which may or may not have actually happened, and if it yeah. had actually happened, would formatively change Weiss from who she was. Otherwise, if we were trying to work through her trauma, if we we're trying to work through her issues, wouldn't Jacques be a better representation of that than the man who was warm and supportive of her? I, wouldn't, I, I don't know. Was the idea Any... that they were trying to free him? Like, his influence was trapped inside of her? But was, that makes no yeah. sense because there was nothing about him that was holding it back. It would have been Jacques, but Jacques wasn't. I the the symbolism of the dream makes no sense. And for yeah. a show that's all about dreams, you would think there would be symbolism that made goddamn sense. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Well, I'm I'm running through the episode, and like the first section of it is just people write. It's you know Ruby and Weiss writing to their respective family members. Actually, I want to make sure. Does Ruby actually have personalized stationery, or was I seeing things? No, she does. She has personalized stationery. <laughs> uh, it has uh, little uh, hearts on it. It's not <laughs> flower petals. It's hearts. What? Maybe, maybe it is flower petals, and it's just shaped like hearts. <laughs> All right. I wanted to pull up. There we go. All this right. So that that scene was fine. The I guess the recollection with Weiss and Blake, where they're kind of like making amends. A little weird in its placement, but it's fine. Yeah, I thought it was okay. Like, like, there, there's a lot in this. We get to see big positive of this episode. I will say, big positive of this episode. We get to see the girls acting as just regular people yeah. out of school, having the time, and interacting as characters. We see interesting character combinations throughout all of this and internet, unique interactions. I give them that. That is more yeah. than what the show has given us I, like condensed. This is condensed more than the show has given us in over eight years. Yes. Like <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> like 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 maybe near the beginning you would have some kind of con competition because in the early time they they weren't so focused on plot. They were more focused on just characters being goofy friends at times. But it yeah. feels like we haven't gotten this level of characters just interacting and being friends in a long time. I don't think oh, yeah. we've ever gotten like this episode alone. I think is probably just as much as we have in the entire eight volumes <laughs> but yeah so and then we have that scene with shiana uh, saying goodbye and it's just like all right so what did people do about nightmares before you came around uh, yeah, what are they, no, yeah. yeah this is the, the this is the uh the my little pony dilemma like oh for for a thousand years when princess luna was on the moon what were you doing <laughs> Uh, they just it's, they just toughed it out. <laughs> nightmares uh, don't even don't even matter. I, I was say, oh, you're infected with a nightmare. Well, time to die. We can't let this fucking yeah. spread. Yeah, it's so that, many it, people die in their sleep. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. now, but the, what I now I was the nightmare. So there's an episode of of uh, Grim Fa Ruby Fairy Tales. I don't know if you've 
either of you have bothered to watch that show. I <laughs> think I've seen all. I think I've seen all of them. I might have yeah. missed two of them. I watched the the Faunus one and I got angry and left. Right. Faunus well, one is the worst one. Yes. Um, yeah. But the first episode. The first episode is really fucking good. Uh, but the, the the apathy one. Was that the, now, that's what I'm wondering now? Was that the apathy? I always thought it was the apathy. I thought it was too, but now with this nightmare thing, now I'm not as sure. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we might I, we might be in a dream ourselves after watching that Shion scene where like the 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 camera like does the weird optical effect in the background. Oh god, that, <laughs> yeah. that was so disorienting. Like, I it give really him, was. I give him props. That's unique and cool. But like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. And that's a lot of the editing in this show. It's like, as someone. If you watch Fixing Ruby, you know I like describing my transitions. I love very fun little transitions, typically match cuts. I love good match cuts. This show has been filled with so many unique transitions, mm -hmm. and almost all of them have just been completely disorienting. <laughs> and a lot like, of Star Wars wipes, you know. <laughs> I didn't even realize the Star Wars wipes. I, I like to be fair, like they they bleed in because Star Wars wipes are fine. They they just like oh it, it, things happen fine. But yeah, say goodbye to Xion. We get literally two images that, like, fill character more than the actual show at times. Yeah, it, it, that is the epitome of my work here is done. Oh my god, I just realized! <laughs> I just realized at fucking, uh... At negative 1813 or 537, depending on which one you would go for. The, the ship taking off is just a sliding PNG into the distance. It just, is it really? Oh, oh now it animates. <laughs> now it animates. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like the ship in Volume 8 when they're flying up into Atlas. It's just, like, rough keyframes. Uh, well, you know, that's the difference between, like, a, you know, like a key, like a 3D animated thing that they can just, like, show, um, in, like, parallax and a 2D thing that they're just like, oh, God, we have to draw a different angle? Ugh. It turns a little bit at the end. I'll give them that, but, <laughs> yeah, geez. but that's, that's always, that's always fun to just see, like, oh, hey, they just made a, uh, flat image move. Uh, then we have the conversation between Ruby and Ozpin. That really mm. accomplishes nothing. Because it's like, Osman's like, so did anything weird happen <laughs> did, in your dream, Did Ruby? anything silver -y happen while you were fighting that nightmare, Grim? I don't no, remember. I really don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must have been the power of friendship. <laughs> All right, you can go downstairs. I need to have an actually important conversation now. <laughs> and then he has the actually important conversation, and it's, it's, it's still Which... good. In fact, I think... I really like how the delivery was and the pacing with the Blake and Ozpin mm. scene. I, I think that was actually done really well. I was, I know I was com complaining about it not having the same ambiance, but the more I'm thinking about it, I actually really like how it's done in this scene. I just, I agree with you guys. It seems hollow following everything that just happened. Yeah, in this scene. yeah. Like like she like, confronted that. Like she literally got pulled out of her faunus nature and then beat it up personally in a in a dream like that's your power fantasy there and you're um you know now you're having this like conversation with ozpin where he was like like he ended that conversation with like is there anything else you want to tell me and it's like what would there be <laughs> well it, I, I i think that was more the like are, are you white fang you can tell me if you're White Fang. You're gonna tell he me already knows. Fang. Yeah, but like she, like, got, she knows that he knows, and he knows that she knows that he knows. But it's sort of like <laughs> I want you to verbally acknowledge it, and she's like, "I'm not gonna do that." <laughs> that Ozpin that, is like, that, uh, "So can I uh, have a, have a, have an Edward pass?" <laughs> you're the only faunus I know. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, we don't hire them here. Um. <laughs> uh, is there a faunus? There, there's no. Is, there's no faunus teachers or any I reference want to, I in want the to book. Ask you a further question: Are there more than three teachers at at Beacon? Uh, yeah. If uh, Linda's good a teacher, then yeah. Goodwitch, uh, Or Plum, Peach. Ublick. Yeah, there's Peach and Plum. 
Yeah, but do those two actually exist, or are they just Glinda dressed I thought they were like acknowledged in the books. I thought they were in scenes in... in I mean, you read the book. I didn't, so... I thought, Peach, I thought, I don't think I thought Pe- Peach and Plum I don't, were in the book. I don't think Peach is in the book. Wait, who's Plum? I don't even remember Plum. I don't remember Plum. Was Plum, yeah. m- Plum might be at... Hold on. At like, are, are you, like, are you sure we're not just quoting Clue characters right now? The Professor Plum has a, has a Ruby Wiki article. Uh, 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 Flare Academy. I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> wait. Oh, is this, oh, wait, is it that? Is no, it that's the, Fanon. That's a I was Fanon gonna say, wiki. is that is that the real wiki or is that the Fanon wiki? Oh, that's the Fanon wiki. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, it keeps coming with the Fanon wiki, but I do remember Princess uh, Princess. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Professor Peach getting mentioned in. Yeah, in no, the, Pe- no, in, yeah, Peach gets mentioned in the uh, the the Forever Fall uh, scene. Yes, and, and I think someone confirmed that Professor Peach is a guy. So like everyone kind of like really? cause, I think because of Princess Peach, like we all assume it's. But like you know, I Peach guess. could be a last name. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, I once had a teacher named Dickman. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you, people just have unfortunate last names sometimes. Yes, like, they do. It ruins your mental image. Yeah, there was a I, uh, I know a guy who my friend knew a guy named like John Hadcock. <laughs> uh. Big, big called worse, boys. <laughs> yeah, I, I am firmly convinced that. Beacon only has three teachers, and that one of them dresses up in a different costume to become Professor Peach. That's that's basically <laughs> my headcanon. There's that as a a consideration for do they hire Faunus? As far as we know, no. Uh, maybe for the janitorial staff. And I can say <laughs> that I have the J pass. I was a janitor. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, so the Blake scene done. I think on a technical level, better done than the original show mm. on a structure level weirder yeah and then we have Blake and Weiss making amends again yeah we don't I hate that she's embarrassed about her dream like I I, I'm, I, I hate that she's embarrassed about getting attacked by a grim and falling prey to something that has a stealth score of like plus 40 <laughs> <laughs> Weiss, you weren't going to notice it. You're 17. <laughs> it's an eldritch abomination. Relax. <laughs> no one's going to be no one. No one's going to fault you for like falling prey to Cthulhu overnight. That happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's really weird, and I just don't I I don't appreciate it as an element of her character. It seems weird. Seems strange yeah uh, the okay then we move on to one of the better scenes which is mm-hmm. ruby and yang and then eventually everyone else just hanging out at the cafe yeah that, that's good that's a good scene that was good stuff that was yes. just characters being characters they're talking about their experiences talking about their, we should we should their, be having to praise this but it is ruby because like that's, that's yeah. <laughs> basic yeah the 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 yang and ruby scene was really good yes it was that was yes. that was probably that, that might be like Top ten like Ruby scenes material. Well, yeah. What what's nice about it is that like it, it does create a nice cap because like I thought we were going to go really hard into season two stuff or volume two stuff. But no, this is actually close. <laughs> Name out. one volume two thing. <laughs> <laughs> I but this was closing out, I think, really well the the miniature arc that like was started mm. in the beginning of volume one where it's you know the it's a direct callback to Oh, you're gonna be the bee's knees, which we didn't get in this, but you know, and whatever. You know, it, it's a direct callback to that conversation that Ruby and Weiss, sorry, Ruby and Yang had earlier. So it's it, it's a nice closeout for that arc, I suppose. That really didn't have an arc; it was like two bullet points. But at least it's two points. At least it's at least it's there. I'm missing his tail for a little bit. That's fine. No one needs to mention it. He's missing his tail again in a different shot. It's okay. If we count all the animation errors with Sun, we'll be here all day. <laughs> yeah. What about that scene that he was, like, layered on top of Blake, even though he was supposed to be, like, behind her? <laughs> Let's be fair. Sun's tail is notoriously hard to remember. I am not <laughs> kidding. In Fixing Ruby Volume 5, there were no less than three or four different <laughs> artists that forgot that Sun had a tail. And we had to, like, in emergency cleanup, just be like, you need to go back and add the tail! And the tail! tail's missing! The tail! 
<laughs> so <laughs> I don't actually fault them for having Sun's Missing Tale. It's why I was more joking about it. It's it's very amusing to me. Very amusing to me that like even professionals forget his tale and they have like I imagine the reference sheet right in front of them the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Very professional. But- but yes, characters being characters, being goofy, you have John Jeez. training. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes professional animators forget to animate the entire scene. <laughs> we, we get cheering Pura, and I'm going to do my damnedest to make a little gif of that to make it an emoji, because I think cheering Pura is adorable. Ren and Nora pretend they're characters in this show. <laughs> <laughs> Were we even in this show? <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> Half their screen time was dedicated to meowing. <laughs> which... Hey, no, Nora still got you dying in your sleep, which is um, one of the best things in this show. True. <laughs> and then... And then we get cafeteria fight at oh. home. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How do you... This has been a massive problem. They don't get the American sense of humor that made the scenes. And I get that people are like, oh, the Japanese sense of humor is so different. Japanese sense of humor can be very snappy, very witty, and very quick. They can be. For whatever reason, they're not here. For whatever reason, they decided to slow it down and telegraph the hell out of it. Like, Weiss making that grandiose speech about the time-honored beacon tradition of a cafeteria fight. No! No! no that, that goes against, like, everything we know about the fight as well, because when Glinda walks in, she's fucking pissed! Yeah, she is. She's like, they're supposed to be the saviors of humanity! What the fuck are they doing <laughs> acting like little kids? And Osman's like, they're so kids for now. Chill out, Glinda. It's okay. It's like, like that was a whole little character beat. <laughs> That was one of the good character beats of Volume 2! How dare you take that away from us? Uh, yeah, I guess Glinda's d- d- hardly a character anymore. Does any- do, do you- Tom, do you know about the new actress who's playing Glinda? Uh, I, so I saw the name. I'm not really familiar with her work, unfortunately. She's relatively new to the scene. Like, she's yeah, only been acting, uh, I think, I think she- I think she- I think she voices someone in Pokemon, but- uh, Jojo was the big one that came up. Oh yeah, she she's she's B in Pokemon in the anime, and she's Nessa B, in right, Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, it, she's Nessa in Pokemon in Masters in Pokemon Masters. Ah, uh, oh well, she got one of the best roles then because Nessa, Nessa, Nessa's like one. Of Nessa's the great. Who Nessa's like one Nessa? of the hottest fucking characters in that. Yeah. Um, well, I don't. She, she I... got Nessa who's hot, and she got B who's cute, and it's like all yeah. right. This, you're, you're two for two on that. You can do uh, it. I, I, so I did not hear who Port was being voiced by. Uh, like, I, I know he was announced, but I didn't hear who the name was. Anybody? Kevin Spacey. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, but the... So... Oh, God. I mean, I guess we're going to start derailing. Have you heard the dub? Like, uh, I know so you heard... I, so I got... Uh, I got... Uh, to see the first episode dubbed at RTX. So, I see, already... Con- when I heard the trailer in the dub, it basically confirmed all of my fears. And basically, it, it, I, I think yes. that they are going to struggle like hell to adapt the English. The English performances are not going to carry through. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think they are either. Like, they're, they're very, very mellow in comparison <laughs> to how they used to be. I wonder if Lindsay is going to go back to her Volume 1 performance or if she's going to stick with her worse you're so arrogant i hate you i imagine we've, she's gonna... we, we've already seen it we know that she's going to be high pitched and squeaky yeah and and Lindsay herself has admitted that she prefers the high pitch and wish she could go back to redo volume one to... oh no she said no. that she said that yeah oh my god yeah I, I have to i have to i have to dig up the article like this was years ago but like she's openly said that she would like to go back and redub volume one with the I, I that is one thing that I would have no reservation just turning to saying, Well, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh. I would say that blatantly to the voice actress's face who chose to perform the way she performed. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. I, and that is oh. that is an opinion that I am willing to die on. That Ruby <laughs> Volume yeah. One lower pitch voice was strictly was better. better. No, it was better. It was better. Yeah. Because oh. she sounded like an actual girl. Like, yeah, she did. 
She didn't sound like a like like that's that's such an issue I've had. It, it's like I I used to be able to bear the high pitched anime voices, but more and more I've gotten older. The more and more, and I'm like, but you could have done something different. You could have done something more, and you could have done something a little more realistic if you're trying to portray a realistic character, especially for Ruby. She she was just better. She was yeah. just strictly better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it because maybe it's harder? But that's weird because it's closer to her natural range, isn't it? I think I don't know because I think like Lindsay's voice is more is closer to uh, Volume One Ruby. Yeah, that's what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Like that, yeah. that's why I, I'm wondering. Is like wouldn't it be harder to keep that voice? I, I, I wonder if maybe it's like a mental thing. Like, I want to keep maybe. myself mentally distinct from the character. Maybe. I, I know that can be a problem for some people. They, 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 they get too attached to the voice and it comes too close to theirs. They can't perform it well. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, and Barbara just does her own voice. For yeah, Barbara, yeah. yeah. Barbara like, doesn't put a whole lot of effort into I, it. I do want to itemize a little bit how much they got wrong. Because, like, you have... You, the scene starts out relatively normal in the in the food in the cafeteria. Yes. R- Ruby arrives and she's like, <laughs> No, 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 no. Just, mm. just quickly, uh, sister, yeah. friends, wife, and it's just like just the fact that she is her own category is funny, <laughs> and yes. the fast delivery. Hey. Making it go by fast, like, like just making us register that at, in time with Weiss. She's like, "Hey, wait a minute!" It's like, yeah, it, it's like funny. she was actually trying to figure out what category to put Weiss in, and she, it's it's like she, it's like the beat is implying that she's thinking about it, yeah. Which, like, no, that's not how. That's not yeah, how she, that works. Ruby <sighs> approached the scene knowing exactly how she was going to address them. She had a little speech prepared. Yeah. yeah. Do the Japanese not prepare speeches? <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they, they took out all the, like... Oh, oh, I was about to make a real dark joke there. Oh, yeah, God. they took out all the references to American politics, which honestly I think was the better choice because... The, the whole using no Lincoln. you're you're changing the world building look bail <laughs> nixon existed his <laughs> crimes cannot be forgiven by the people of bail. Uh, he opened uh, up trade to vacuo and diminished the quality of valiant uh, goods like this <laughs> happened people <laughs> uh, and then um oh the pie scene you know yeah, oh, yeah, God, I, I still cannot stand. It's like, like now you've turned the food fight from the spontaneous fun thing that the characters just made happen Did. into this dramatic, like, like rite of passage thing for Beacon students. That and how if would... it was, why would all the other students run away from it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, that bothered me in the real show, too. It's just like, Linda's like, oh, why are these fucking idiots good being fucking idiots? And it's just like, you're looking at the only students that weren't afraid of getting a hit with a watermelon. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I mean, frankly, I would have been like, I'm just, I'm just going to leave. I don't want to have to clean my clothes. Like, I would just casually shuffle my way out. Uh, we don't even get we don't get a cameo by Neptune, which I think was no. a smart move. That's fine. Like, yeah, cut away Neptune. before that could happen. They took away the White Rose moment, and that <sighs> pisses me off. Not just as a White Rose fan, actually, because yeah. that scene does technically still piss me off from a fundamental level for how they teased it and they pissed us all off. But just going through the heart of the show, the relationships were so important. Weiss and Ruby's dynamic was so fundamental to the show. Like, like, Weiss's rejection of her team, in particular Ruby and Blake, was so important. And you have, like, this 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 reconnection with, with Weiss and Blake several times throughout this episode. You could have given us one, one real solid just Ruby and Weiss moment where they're being goofy friends. I wouldn't even mind if you changed it where, like, you can see the, see the two maybe, like, she looks down at Weiss and the two just start laughing because it's so much fun and goofiness. You could have yeah. done that. And they didn't. And now it feels like the whole Ruby Weiss dynamic is just sort of like 
it doesn't feel like it's had its own isolated conclusion. It feels like it's all been lumped together as Team Ruby coming together, not Ruby and Weiss making amends. Like, they, they tried too hard with this to try to, like, tie this into Volumes 1 and 2, but, like, the way they explained things just kind of made me wish they hadn't. Like, wish they hadn't bothered half the time. Yeah, like, also, it, wait. It's one, those, yeah. it's one of those situations where, like, the explanation is somehow dumber than what we got initially. Oh, it, oh, it actually, it just realized, isn't this supposed to be an entire semester later? Yeah, I don't know. But it feels like we're treating this as if it happened, like, just, just after the events that we've seen in this anime, which well, is still uh, the first I mean, semester. I mean, as we all know, anytime timelines, anytime, like, times come up, that's when plot holes, you know, develop. So often, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Less you know, you can't have holes. a time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <You> can. <laughs> I mean, unless they're implying <laughs> that this is a separate incident that just so happened to follow a mirror of a lot of things that happen later. Like, they just made food fights a regular thing. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, where the time lapse would be. Because, like, it's, like, you know right after the um the team gathering stuff. You know, like, the, the, the Emerald Forest part. And yeah. then Weiss, or then Jean gets uh, consumed by the nightmare. Yeah. And then Weiss gets consumed by the nightmare. Where was the time skip? I, I don't know, because right after we're done with the Nightmare, we immediately go into the interview with Blake and Ozpin. And it's like, but, but the, and the, in the timeline, of the, chrono the chronology of this show is like, well, we've now gone nine episodes since then. Do we really care anymore? Like, I, yeah. did they move, like, did they move the time skip from after the Emerald Forest scene to the the end of the first semester like was that the time skip did they like do the team announcement and then just skip the entire semester they had no, the port they, they had the port thing they had the they had the port and uh, scene in the uh, his classroom and weiss fighting with the yeah editor. we saw the first day of classes yeah so i i don't know where the time skip i i just presume that the time skip happened between the last scene that we saw of them like all seen around that that table like between the cafe and now is the time skip Ugh. or yeah that's or between like john training and and the cafeteria fight uh, an entire semester just passes i presume but they it feels like they're treating it like it, it's not Every day out there is worth a week in here. <laughs> we only got a week in here, Uncle Crow. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> Time is warped and space is bendable. Oh, <clears throat> Christ. Well, Crow, Crow is, like, I think Crow got mentioned once this entire show. Did we even get that? Uh, is, is this my uncle? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> it, we just got the mention of a dusty old Crow, I think. No, we didn't even get that. It was it was Ruby mentioning to Tai Yang when they were leaving Uncle Crow. Oh, wow, wow! This is like I mean, much like right. Roman and Cinder, Crow does not matter in this in this spinoff. Yeah, it it feels so disjointed. Like I said, for the fifth billionth time, and I will repeat it again until I'm blue in the face. They should have just done their own time skip thing, yeah. like like just just. Find that time skip period and just fill in the gap. Don't don't explore before or after necessarily. Maybe recap a few things that happened by just having characters talk about it, mention it, go through their personal struggles. It, you know what would have been interesting? If Weiss, after volume one, was still struggling with treating Blake as a person because she's a faunus. Like like yeah. having having the issue of like that struggle of like I agreed to be a better person, but I can't. I can't stand you. I, can't I, I stand actually, actually kind of liked how you did it at the beginning of your uh, volume two fixing with like Weiss coming back from vacation, like having that conversation with herself in the airship before she docked. Like I thought that was a real that would have been a really cool touch. That was yeah. That was a whole thing I tried to focus on, and then you have like it, also in the fixing volume two. One thing that I had was like Weiss casually asking. A, a, a rather racist thing of Blake and like Blake's like that's not how that works and Weiss is like I, I'm trying to learn help <laughs> it's, it's like like Weiss is Weiss is putting an effort in even if she's doing it wrong she's putting an effort in and Blake can appreciate that and be like 
you know what? We'll hang out for an afternoon and we can discuss some of these things. <laughs> yeah. We can we can dispel some of the things you might have picked up on as as stereotypes or something like that. Like <laughs> like that was a whole dynamic I built in there because it's like we didn't get anything like that in the show and this was the perfect opportunity to explore it, especially with Weiss coming to face to face with her own racist thoughts in her dream. You have yeah. all the opportunity and you missed it. <sighs> yeah, that's so messed up. <laughs> yeah, like at the at the beginning, I I was asked like I I remember asking the question like why do we need this? And, you know, maybe we'll they'll explain that later on. I still don't know why we needed this show. The best I can say is that we now affirm that they are definitely friends by the start of volume two. <laughs> that that's I really guess, it. And that's I guess really not we... a big consolation. Yeah, like, do we do we need an entire side story just for them, the creators, to convince us that Team Ruby were actually friends? I would argue. Well, I would actually consider argue yes. that they didn't. <laughs> yeah. oh. I, I would argue that yes, we needed it, and this was not the story that no. we needed. And this honestly should it shouldn't have been a volume one story at all. Yeah. Like, this would have been just as good in, like, volume, like, you know, or, like, you know, later on. I, it should have been in volume five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Explains why they're stuck in the fucking house the entire time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that should have been in volume five. Oh, God. It implied that it, it, it really more. A more interesting story really was going on that whole time. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, to be fair, this... All right, all right. Let's put this. Let's rank this. Where does this stand in relation to the Ruby volumes? Quality-wise. Uh, I mean, if we're going with just, like, casual gratification, like, not terrible. Like, I definitely would put it above five and maybe even above eight, just because eight's such a mess. Uh, past that, I'd have to really think about it. Okay. I need to actually it's organize my thoughts on the volumes. It's not <clears> worse <throat> than seven. No. It's not worse than five. You, you don't... Yeah, no, it's definitely not worse than five. Five, so... Five, um, eight... I don't know, maybe, maybe along the lines of three and four? Yeah, you get, yeah, the, yeah I... I fighting no, words, no, motherfucker. no, no, I, I did, no. Okay, 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 whoa, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, four my, is four is the most competent. Three is the most interesting. Uh, at least yeah, that's my, typically my beat on it. I mean, for okay, for for my for my list for my list, I'm mm. I I think it goes right below either right below or right above three. It's on one side of three. Okay. Um, I I uh, put it below three, just above. No, I put it on uh, par with one. It's like in the situation where it's yeah. like one was endearing because of its early like jankiness and right. the the self made anime type feel going on for it. It had a lot yeah. of charm to it. Mm -hmm. This lacks that charm, but what it lacks in charm, it makes up for being more competent. Yeah, in yeah. certain ways. So it's like it's like you trade one for another, and it they kind of balance out, and then. You still got three above it. You got two, I think, below it. Yeah, th three had higher highs, yeah, uh, and lower lows. Mm. So this is kind of just like a more consistent, like it. It's like I, I think this and three average out to a, a about a tie for me. But okay. like three has higher peaks and lower lows. Um, yeah, because uh, my rank would go four, six, one, eight. Ice Queen and three. Who do we appreciate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then two, five, and seven. If we got if we got like four is the S tier, and then like six, one, and eight is the A tier, and then Ice Queen and three would be the B tier, and then uh, two would be C, and five would be F, and seven would be. All right, now here comes the C. ultimate the <laughs> ultimate consideration. Mm -hmm. do we from now on consider ice queendom in our ranking of volumes or do we just discount it entirely from here on out i mean it's a full season of the show 
arguably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it, I think I think it might be is is it the longest season? Yes. It's 12 it's 12 20 minute episodes. Uh, three 20 minute episodes is an hour, so it'd be four hours. No, I actually think volume five is longer. Oh, you're right, because they had 14 episodes, and those get arranged around 28 minutes apiece, didn't they? Yeah. 15, 20 minutes apiece? I, I think volume five... No. I, I, I don't know. I'll, I think I think volume five might be longer, but I, I don't know. Uh, no, I it's, mean, it's I, definitely I, volume six, but that's just because they put the intro in every single... Uh, no, that was volume the, five. Was that volume five where they have the intro? Uh, and Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, so then, yeah, it's volume five. <laughs> volume five beats mm-hmm. it handily, because they just keep... Just they just slammed all the episodes together without editing them into an actual. Without editing back them. Yeah. <laughs> I God. mean, it, um, it, but it also runs the problem like how much it's do like if we try and fit this into the canon, and that just raises more questions. It has it things that contradict the canon. It's exactly it's, like what, what what about the nightmare? Like, are there still more nightmare out there? Are they all like they say there aren't any more in the kingdom, but are there any more in the world? How what do you a- know that there aren't any more in the kingdom? Can you yeah. sense that? Yeah. What about what about Shion? Where are they now? Are they still traveling the world? Did they die in the fall? Like, where the fuck? Where the fuck did they go? Did they die they in a down- ditch somewhere? <laughs> they, they fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shion. I have life alert. Don't worry. I have white hair. I had to prepare for this. Like, is, is she? I'm gonna show up at some point later on now, or are they just? Is this? Is this just it? Is in, the, in that case, like, we never never mention them. Like, nobody ever. Like, God, can you imagine seeing Shion's outfit in the 3D models? Ugh. Yes. Yeah. I've seen Maggie Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I was gonna say it. But... All right. Well, are there? Uh, are there any more closing thoughts on this? Ah, uh, I, I don't know why we need this, but again, I will say at least this did feel like Ruby's story, like Team Ruby's story. Yes, Jean didn't take away from them. Shion didn't take away. Yeah, from them. very firmly on the four girls, and you know what? For for whatever faults they are, and there are plenty, I at least admire them for doing that. Yeah. We got Tiny Weiss. We, we, we got Tiny Weiss. Weiss. So, yeah. at least... We got Big Nicholas. Weiss. Tiny Weiss and Big Nicholas. That's a better show. We should go watch yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys enjoyed this content, I hope you enjoyed this content. We had a blast going through this, even though we were suffering at times. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly for, through episode 10, but, you know. Yeah. Mostly through episode 10. Yeah, but if, for the most part, I we this was... Um, Again, as far as casual gratification goes, this was an enjoyable watch. Yeah. 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 Remember, uh, t- Tiny Weiss, Big Nicholas, uh, the fact that, you know, the Ruby girls actually interacted with each other, like, it, the, there's there's value to be had. Yeah. Remember, if you liked this content and you want to keep supporting the channel, like the video, ring that bell, mm-hmm. and subscribe Preferably in the order of subscribe, then ring the bell, because my brain got it backwards for some reason. If you Uh, want to support the channel even more directly, you can always uh, support me on my Patreon for one dollar or more. And you can also support these two gentlemen here on their Patreons Mm -hmm. for one dollar or more. And get access to the Team Frostbite Discord server, where us three, as long with other prominent members of the Ruby community, are regularly active. On top of that... Me and Tom both have books that are currently yes. available at a host. Well, for him, a host of different sources. For me, exclusively yes, on Amazon. Be yes, sure to look up is Kent. A, uh, yes, which is which is available and through physical distribution uh, through Amazon and the Barnes Noble website, not through the physical bookstores, but through their website and an ebook. Just about anywhere you pick up your ebooks. Exactly. So look for Kent by Tom Haran and yep. The Artificer by Raymond McNeil, and I. Hope you will enjoy. They're they're both fun books. Can't wait for more people to get them. Also, also at the as of the day this video goes up, uh, I will be on my honeymoon because I'm getting married this week. Woo! Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ball and chain. I mean, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh... No, no, no. You're gonna be the ball and chain. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, uh, for those interested, I will actually be doing another podcast on Ice Queendom with the Judgmental Critter. So oh. look forward to that over on Judgmental's, uh, channel whenever she gets that up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, mm. all right. 
Thank you all so much for joining us, and we'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.